Hey guys, how's it going? Today I'm going to show you how to kill banshees, but before I start this video, if you're looking for more slayer guides, please check out the description box below for a full list of all the guides I have posted thus far. Enjoy the rest of the video. So here are the timestamps for this video, and I've broken up this guy into three different sections if you want to skip forward. The first section will go over the general information about this monster, the second section will cover armor setups depending on the attack style you want to use, and the final section will cover all the location information needed to get you set up for your slayer task. So let's first go over the information charts for banshees. There are two versions which you can kill, there are banshees and also twisted banshees. We'll go over banshees first. Banshees have a combat level of 23, they require a slayer level of 15 to kill. They are classified as undead creatures, so the effects of the salve amulet and the crumble undead spell work on them. They have a magical melee attack, which is just a fancy way of saying you can use the protect from melee prayer and take no damage from them whatsoever, or you can wear armor with high magic defensive bonuses to reduce the amount of damage taken. They have a max hit of 2, and it turns into 8 if you're not wearing earmuffs or a slayer helmet. They are aggressive monsters, but they will only attack players who are combat level 46 or below and they are only in one location, which is in the Mauritania Slayer Tower. Now, taking a closer look at the combat stats, they only have 22 hit points, its attack, strength, and defense levels are very low, so overall, these are very weak monsters. Going down to the attack bonuses, you can see it has no extra attacking bonuses, so that's always good for us. Looking at the defensive bonuses, they do have a plus 5 for stab, slash, crush, and range attacks, which is not that high at all, and also has zero magic defensive bonuses. Lastly, they have no immunities to poison or venom, so bringing those type of weapons can help to speed up your slayer task. So overall, this version of the Banshee is very easy to kill, and lower levels shouldn't have any issues killing them. If I had to choose an armor setup to fight these, I would go for a melee magic defense setup first, a range setup second, a magic setup third, and a melee prayer setup fourth. Now moving on to the Twisted Banshee, these have a combat level of 89, they require a slayer level of 15, so these can also be killed as an alternative if you're a higher combat level. They're classified as undead creatures, so the effects of the salve amulet and the crumble undead spell work. They have a magical melee attack, which is just a fancy way of saying that you can use the protect from melee prayer and take no damage from them whatsoever, or you can wear armor with high magic defensive bonuses to reduce the damage taken. But because Twisted Banshees are relatively strong and are also located in the Catacombs of Kren, which is in a multi-combat area, I wouldn't want to use a melee magic defensive setup against these. Anyways, they have a max hit of 9, they are aggressive monsters, and they are only in one location, which is in the Catacombs of Kurend. Now taking a look at the combat stats, you can see that its aggressive stats are pretty high with 100 hit points, 75 attack, and 85 strength. The one good thing about Twisted Banshees is that its defense level is 50 and its magic level is 1, so using magic to safe spot them is super powerful here. And looking at the attack bonuses, there are none so that's always good for us. And looking at the defensive bonuses, you can see that it has plus 15 in stab, slash, crush, and range, so if you're using any of those attack styles, your hits will be a little less consistent. You can also see that it has 0 in magic defense bonus, so like I said before, using magic here, especially with a crumble undead spell, is really powerful against these creatures. Lastly, they have no immunities to poison or venom, so bringing those types of weapons can help to speed up your slayer task. So overall, the Twisted Banshee is going to be more difficult for lower level players, but if you're a mid to high combat level, you shouldn't have any issues killing these, especially since it has such low defensive stats. If I had to choose an armor setup to fight these, I would go for a magic setup first. My second option would be to use a ranged setup to safe spot them, and the third option would be to use a melee prayer setup and just have the protect from melee prayer on the entire time since these are in a multi-combat area. So we're now moving on to the armor selection and feel free to use the timestamps on the screen now to skip forward to your desired armor setup. Alright, we'll begin with the magic armor chart. As you can see here, I've ranked each magic item from the best to the least best for each armor category. The one thing you have to look out for is the helmet slot. You have to wear one of the helmets that I've listed on screen or else you will take constant damage and have your stats drained by the banshee screams. Also, in terms of choosing weapons and spells, I've ranked them by their overall magic strength and I've tried to put small descriptions of the bonuses alongside with the requirements to use it underneath. If you plan to use the crumble undead spell, which is mostly used by lower level players, the only way I see it as a viable option is if you auto cast it and only particular staves can do that, so on the screen now, 
I've ranked the best stabs to autocast the Crumble Undead spell if that's the magic spell you want to use to fight this undead creature. So feel free to pause the video now to build your armor setup, and if you have any trouble, you can always look up whichever item on Google and search for it on the OSRS wiki. I've also placed a timestamp at the top right if you want to skip forward. So moving on to the ranged armor chart, as you can see here, I've ranked each ranged item from the best to least best for each armor category. The one thing you have to look out for is the helmet slot. You have to wear one of the helmets that I've listed on screen or else you will take constant damage and have your stats drained by the Banshee screams. So feel free to pause the video now to build your armor setup and if you have any trouble, you can always look up whichever item on Google and search for it on the OSRS wiki. I've also placed a timestamp at the top right if you want to skip forward. Now moving on to the melee magic defense armor chart, I've ranked each item from the best to least best for each armor category. The one thing you have to look out for is the helmet slot. You have to wear one of the helmets that I've listed on screen or else you will take constant damage and have your stats drained by the banshee screams. But I understand for this chart in particular that it can be quite overwhelming if you're a newer player and it's mostly because there's just so many items in the game that provide magic defensive bonuses. My strategy will be to look at the items from the top tier items down to the lower tier and just look for items that you're familiar with. And if you're curious about any of the items or if you want to upgrade to a higher tier item, searching for that item on Google will tell you all the requirements needed to wear that item. And finally moving on to the melee prayer chart, I've ranked each item from the best to the least best for each armor category. The one thing you have to look out for is the helmet slot. You have to wear one of the helmets that I've listed on screen or else you will take constant damage and have your stats drained by the banshee screams. So feel free to pause the video now to build your armor setup and if you have any trouble, you can always look up whichever item on Google and search for it on the OSRS wiki. So we're now moving on to location information. I made timestamps for each location and also broken up into three different parts including how to get there inventory and quick pairs, as well as an in-game example. So feel free to pause the video now to use the timestamps and to skip forward. So we'll first go over how to get to the Mauritania Slayer Tower, but before we do that, there's a couple of things that you should know about this area. First, you must have completed the Priest and Peril quest and have spoken to Drezzle to access Mauritania and the Slayer Tower. The second thing is that if you use the Mauritania Slayer Tower for your Slayer task, you also get a bonus Slayer XP boost for completing different levels of the Mauritania Achievement Diary. So completing the easy, you get a 2.5% bonus, medium, you get 5%, hard, 7.5%, and elite, 10%. Anyways, having said all that, let's go on to how to get there. The fastest way to get here is by using a Slayer Ring and teleporting to the Slayer Tower. You can either buy the ring for 75 Slayer reward points, but you only get 8 charges with the ring, or you can unlock the Ring Bling Unlock at the Slayer Store for 300 reward points so you can make the rings yourself. The next fastest way is to use the Fairy Ring code CKS which will bring you just south of the tower and all you have to do is run north. The next fastest way is to use the Salve Graveyard Teleport. You can buy the tablet from the Grand Exchange or you can make the tablet yourself or you can use the teleport in the Arceus Spellbook at level 40 magic along with having 60% Arceus Favor. The next fastest way is to use the Kirill teleport, but this can only be used if you have completed the Desert Treasure quest. So you have multiple options, but you can buy the tablet from the Grand Exchange, you can buy from Justine's Last Man Standing Shop for one point, you can use the teleport in the Ancient Magic Spellbook at level 66 magic, or you can use the Kirill portal inside a player owned house. The next fastest way after that is by using the Ecto file, which you can get after the Ghost Ahoy quest, and then you can just run all the way west. If all of those are not options, you can just run all the way from Varrock, just like in the Priest and Peril quest, and then you can use the Holy Barrier just south of Drezzle to get into Mauritania. Also, you're not allowed to use a Dwarf Multi Cannon in the Slayer Tower, and there is a safe spot available for you to use. And here are my inventory examples for each armor setup. You can copy it completely or alter it to your liking. Same goes with the quick pair settings. Here would be the settings that I would use for each armor setup, but feel free to change them to your liking. So here's the in-game example of how I would kill Banshees in the Mauritania Slayer Tower. So I'm outside the main entrance right now and we want to head north. Just kind of run through the corridors past all of the crawling hands. So there will be these little passageways that you, you can keep going through. Just head northwest. Then once you get to the northwest corner, just head all the way east. Run all the way east until you can't run east anymore, and then run south. And then just head kind of southwest through the passageways. And you'll start seeing the Banshees, but I like to use the southeastern room here. So once you get into the room, you can go ahead and drink your stat boosting potions, activate your quick prayers, 
have your auto retaliate on, and then you can just go ahead and attack the Banshees. And you can see where the safe spot is, it's actually just behind this torch and kind of just above the staircase. So you can just stand right over here, go ahead and attack the Banshees, walk back onto this uh, tile that I've marked, and they won't be able to hit you because they're using a melee attack. But yeah, that's basically how you safe spot them. If you encounter the superior version, you can just safe spot them with the same tactic, or if you're using melee, you can turn on your protect from melee prayer or just tank the damage. Now moving on to the catacombs of Karend, the fastest way to get here is either by using your own house or someone else's house portal or portal nexus to get to Karend. For people playing on an Iron Man account, you will not be able to enter other people's houses. If you're on a normal account and don't know how this method works, make sure that you have a house in Remington first, and you can do this by talking to any estate agent either in Varrock or Falador and buying a house for 5,000 coins. Once you have your own house, you now have the ability to use the teleport to house tabs or the spell in the spellbook. In terms of the method, you want to go to the house party world 330, you want to teleport to your house, and once you're in your house, you want to click the purple portal to exit your house, and once you're outside, you want to click the blue birdhouse just south of the portal, and this will pull up a list of hosts who have their houses open. You want to find a host that has a portal nexus of 3, and it really doesn't matter which host that you choose, just click the arrow button to the right to enter their house. And once you're inside their house, and every house is designed a little bit differently depending on the host, but you're looking for something that looks like this. Once you find the portal nexus, you can left click it to pull up the teleport menu and choose the Kuren Castle option to get yourself to the main entrance of the catacombs. The next fastest way is by using a Xerix Talisman and teleporting to Xerix Heart, but you can only do this after you have completed the Architectural Alliance mini quest. The next fastest way is by using the Coret's Memoirs and teleporting to either the Dark Disposition or the Lunch by the Lancaliums, but you must have completed those respective quests to use those teleports. The next fastest way is by using a Watson teleport, and they are pretty expensive, but you can buy from the Grand Exchange or get the teleports from Clue Scrolls. The next fastest way is by using a Xerix Talisman to get yourself to the Xerix Lookout or Xerix Glade, or you can also use a mounted Xerix Talisman in another person's player-owned house. If all of those are not options, you can just sail to Port Piscarillus. You need to speak to Vales, who is located on the most northern docks of Port Sarim. To get to Port Sarim, you can just use an Amulet of Glory to get yourself to Draenor Village. You can also have your house relocated to Remington and then just run east after exiting your house portal, or you can walk there from the nearby cities like Faldor or Lumbridge to get to the docks. Once you get there, you can just right-click Vales and choose the Port Piscarillus option, and after crossing the Gangplank, you can just run all the way west until you reach the Kingdom of Great Karend. Also, you are not allowed to use a Dwarf Multicannon here, and there are safe spots available for you to use. And here are my inventory examples for each armor setup. You can copy it completely or alter it to your liking. Same goes with the Quick Pair settings. Here would be the settings that I would use for each armor setup, but feel free to change them to your liking. So here's the in-game example of how I would kill Twisted Banshees in the Catacombs of Karend. So you can just follow me, but when you're near the statue, just left-click it to climb down into the catacombs. There will be a small cutscene, and once you're in the main room, you want to run east into the Moss Giant room and then head south, and you can also turn on your Protect from Melee prayer as we will pass some aggressive monsters along the way. Just run all the way south until you can't run south anymore, and then head west into the Dagonoth room, and make sure to take the path north into the Anchor Room. So once you enter the Anchor Room, just run all the way west and you'll see the Twisted Banshees. And you can stand in the corridor where I marked the tile, and this is basically the safe spot so you won't be attacked. So there's not much to it, just whichever armor setup you are using, just drink a dose of your stat boosting potions, activate your quick prayers, have your auto retaliate on, make sure you have your spell chosen if you're using magic, and you can just go ahead and attack the Twisted Banshee. If you have superiors unlocked and you see the screaming Twisted Banshee, it's literally just a bigger version of the Twisted Banshee and it's just as easy to kill so there's no need to worry. Anyways guys, I'm going to end the guide here. If this video has helped you out and you want to help me out as well, I'd greatly appreciate it if you could leave a like on the video and subscribe to the channel. And if you're doing more Slayer, make sure to check out my other Slayer guides in the description box below. But that's about it. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Later.